Hey guys, what's up? Timmy J Tech here, and welcome back to my channel. In this series, I'll be showing you how to create your own idle clicker game in Unity. Recently, I've created the base of an idle clicker game, and now I'll continue to add new features to make it look and work a little bit better. In this episode, I'll show you how to save data to keep specific variables after closing your game in Unity. I'll link the documentation pages in the description, but first I want to show you how to save a basic integer value. With any data type, you'll want to serialize the field first. You want to do this by writing an attribute before that field. If the variable is public, then you don't need to do this because Unity already has serialized that public field. If your variable is private, then you'll want to write this attribute in square brackets to make sure that the data is serialized, allowing the Unity editor to see your private variable and save it. Here's an example of our game manager script, which I've made with our idle clicker game. All this does is saves a public integer of money and displays it on the screen with some text. When the user rounds up an animal, it uses the add money function, and when they buy something in the shop, it uses the take money function. Because this data type is public, it already gets serialized, so we don't need to do anything to that. But if we did have a private variable, then we'll want to make sure we write serialized field right above it. Now the Unity editor will be able to see this variable, even though it is private. Just so you know, you cannot serialize static fields or properties. However, you can serialize classes, data types, built-in data types like vectors, colors, or quaternions, arrays, lists, enums, and structs. For more information on this, you should check out the serialized field documentation in the description down below. The first is don't destroy on load, which will keep objects and scripts in the scene while swapping to a new scene. This can be useful if you have multiple scenes, but not very useful if you're going to want to save the game once it's closed. Here's a basic example of don't destroy on load. When the game starts and void awake is ran, we'll want to make sure that our game manager script saves between different scenes. To do this, we'll want to run the method don't destroy on load and pass in our game object, which is this game object. So now when you go to different scenes, this game manager will not destroy. This works with all sorts of game objects. I was just using this game manager as an example. But if you have a player that wants to go between scenes, you can either have separate game objects of that same player in different scenes so that you just control that player whenever you swap scenes, or you can have don't destroy on load so that it's the same exact player throughout each scene. But to save data after the player closes the game, you'll want to save your data to player prefs. That means that the data type integer, float, or string will get stored into the user's platform registry. The path of this data will depend on the device that you're exporting your game to. That's not to worry because those paths are in the player prep documentation, but we won't need those for this tutorial. The easiest way to get your data back when loading the game is by setting that player prep data back to your initial data type. So we can save that data to each player prep either in the update so that it's stored in each frame, or you can save it when the player closes the game using the on application quit method. So we have two instances where we want to save the data and we want to load the data. To load the data, we'll want to do that in void start. So I'll do public void start. And in this method, we're going to want to load our player prefs whenever the game starts. So at the start of our game, we're going to want to reset our money to be equal to whatever is saved into our player prefs dot get int. I'll just set this to money so it's very basic to remember. Then there's two ways to save that data. We can either do it in update or on application quit. And we'll want to say player prefs.set int. And inside here we'll do our money and comma money. We can do the same thing on application quit. So void on application quit. We'll say player prefs. All right, make sure you don't have any errors and it looks like we are all good. So when I hit play, I can click on our game manager and it will show that we have zero dollars. So once I actually try to get some money by rounding up the duck, we then have 10 money. So if I close the game, it'll set it back to zero. And when I hit play, voila, we have 10 money. So I can set this to 50 and then go out of it. And there we go, we have $50. But as you can see, we're not actually updating the text. So right here, we have this line in add money. Money text dot text is equal to dollar sign plus money to string. So we'll save that and put that in our update method. So each frame, it'll actually update our money. We can even do that in the start just in case. So when it starts, it'll actually do that in that first frame. Save that and go back into Unity. And now we can hit play and it should still be at 50. There we go. It is updating. So now I can hit 60. 71, 75, 
89, it will always update the text to actually being that money. When you close the game, make sure you don't set the money when the game is closed to like 15. Because then when you hit play, it's going to save it back to that player pref. So if you want to reset the money value, you'll have to hit play and then set the actual variable to zero. So that it saves it in player prefs each update frame or when the game is closed. So now, even though it's 15, when I hit play, zero is what the actual value is. If we want to make a function to reset our money, we can create a public void reset money function. And this will just set our money value to zero. Now, when money is equal to zero, it will set that to zero and then it will update each frame or when they close the game to zero. So let's test this out, save and load our game. When we hit play, we have our duck. I'll slowly round him up into the barn. So now we have 10 and we can close. Make sure that we still have 10 there. Perfect. So now if I go into my UI elements and I just take my auto roundup button, which is this button here and duplicate it, I can rename it to reset money button. And then I will just change this uh, function here to game manager and reset money. Then I'll want to move over the button a little bit so that it's not over top of the same one. Just move it right here in the middle, maybe. So it's like kind of out of the way. And then we'll change the title to say reset money. There we go. So now I'll save and hit play. So now I still have that $10. I can round up the duck again. Now we have 20 and I can hit reset money and now it's zero. So if I go to my game manager, it's zero. And if I restart the game, we're back to zero. Perfect. So player press is working and when the game closes, everything will be saved. So this works with a lot of other data types as well. I can duplicate this by hitting shift alt and down arrow and we'll create a float as well as a string. I'll change the name so that they're not all money to uh, float money and string money. Now it works the same exact way with both of these. So instead of playerprefs.getInt, we want playerpref.getFloat or playerpref.getString. So then we'll just want to change our variables to floatMoney and stringMoney. And that variable in the quotations is actually the variable that's being stored in player prep. So that's the name of that specific variable. So we're actually getting and setting that specific variable, even though it's this one in our code. And then to set it, we'll do the exact same thing. We want to set float and set string. So now we have three different data types set up for this. So we can easily just save whatever float or string we want as well. So now we have a float. So if I hit play, I can set the float to 2.5 and our string to duck. And then when we close out of the game, you can see it zeroes back out to whatever is null or um, zero. And then when we hit play again, it does save those exact data types. So because we only have three different data types, integer, float, and string, it does make it a bit harder to save other data types like booleans or ulongs. So for a boolean, you'll just want to save it as an integer as zero or one, or you could save it as a string as true or false. But for ulongs, since it is such a big number, it won't fit inside of integer or float, so you'll want to save it inside of string as well. Most things you can save inside a string, so I'll show you how to do that here. Let's say our money is a ulong. So that is a very long number and we can't save this variable to player prefs, but we want to figure out how to save that to player prefs so that we can actually save it when the game closes. I'll rename this money variable to you long money. That's kind of funny. I, I'm pretty sure everyone longs to have money, but we'll put you long money is equal to player prefs. So the first thing we want to do is convert this you long so that it is able to be 
saved into a string. So I'll say ulong money is equal to system dot convert and we'll do to un64 and inside of here we'll want to get that string because we're saving our ulong to a string and so to get it we'll want to get our string so we'll say player prefs dot get string and then our ulong money So now that we've gotten our ulong by converting it, we'll want to save it as a string. So here in update, we'll say playerprefs.setString. And we'll do our ulong money with our comma. And since it's a string, we'll have a empty string here and concatenate it with our money. So now it's actually saving our ulong money to our money. So I guess we can do ulong money. So then we'll be able to display whatever string is in our ulong. So as long as the string is like a huge number like this big, this string can save it instead of as a integer like this, it can save it as a string and then convert it back into a ulong, which can take in this amount of numbers. So save and then everything will run perfectly. Now we have a ulong and we can hit play. So now we have two gigantic numbers. One is an integer and one is a ulong. And when we go out of there, we can see that the integer actually can't store that high of a number. So it goes down to this. Whereas the ulong saved it as a string and can store that exact number. And there you have it. So now we can just uh, reset our money. Set it to zero. String is null. And there we go. Now when we go out of the game and back into it, everything is back to normal. All right, so this is what we want our file to actually look like. So we have our money field and you can keep it as public or private. I just keep it as public. It doesn't really matter too much just so that I can see the integer in the unity editor. And then on start, we'll set money equal to player preps get in money. And then on void update player preps set in money to our money variable. So on update each frame or on application quit, it's saving our money variable to the money in player prefs. And then on start, it is setting that money in player prefs to our money variable. So hopefully you're able to save most data types and even game objects. Obviously game objects is a lot harder to save because you're saving all the data within a game object. And so you have to create your own save system. Make sure you update your string so that it updates at the start and update. And this is the easiest way to save different data types when the game closes in Unity. So if you did enjoy, please drop a like. I'll have more tutorials coming soon, so stick around. If you have any recommendations for tutorials you want to see, just let me know in the comments down below. But thank you all for watching and have a nice day.